Hey everyone, I am Brady Bricks here for another episode of the Combat Logic. Joining me today, back is my co-host Tyler Avery. Um, I haven't been able to find Justice. He hasn't messaged me back, so it may just be me and Tyler for now on. We're going to be talking about UFC one, Fight Night 193 between uh, Tiago Santos and Johnny Walker. Now, starting off the main card is Alejandro Perez and Jenny, Johnny Edwater, Eduardo. Sorry. No, both these guys are really good players. They both have good grappling. They both have good striking. And they're both coming off two defeats. Um, can you tell me anything about this fight? Um, I'm not really sure how this one's going to play out. Uh, it could, it, it, it's like a breakaway fight for either one of them. I feel like whoever loses this fight, it kind of might go there. Their career might go on like a, a downward you know, yeah. or they might they might end up finding themselves uh um not maybe not cut from the UFC but uh have like a developmental contract in one of the lower sub divisions that the UFC has now. Mm -hmm. Uh maybe something like that. I, I like Alejandro uh Perez even though he's he's had like a couple a couple tough fights, but I think he's a pretty good fighter. I think uh whoever mm -hmm. wins this fight might have uh you know might have their their steps into success in the UFC and the other one may may uh maybe fall away a little bit yeah yeah I think uh Eduardo's pretty old honestly he made his UFC debut like 10 years ago and he KO'd yeah. Eddie Wineland it's something nobody expected to happen yeah but he's, he's an experienced guy in in uh very. since then I feel like he goes school. in a lot as the underdog probably he does, because he doesn't fight very often either. Right. All right. We got, let's see, Douglas Silva de Andrade and Gaetano Perillo. No, Silva de Andrade, god damn it, this camera does not want to stay today. De Andrade came to the UFC with like a 22-0 record. It was really re remarkable, kind of ridiculous, because he lost his first fight. We got to see that it's a bit padded, but since then, we've gotten to see he's a pretty technically skilled fighter, too. And then... Perello, I think we've only ever seen him get submitted by Ricky Simone. Um, I think I'm going to take Douglas in this fight. Do you have anything to add to it? I'm not sure who I take on this one, but something to note is that for so, so early in the prelims, even with the the fight we talked about before, these are pretty experienced guys to be uh, opening yeah. up the prelims. So these are That's potentially... What I thought. Yeah, these will potentially be fights to watch because uh, you're getting a little bit bang for your buck. You're getting high level experience uh, guys right, right in the early prelims. So I feel like that's a good sign. That could be a good fight. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Next up, we got. Uh, shit. Sorry, I'm looking at his record at this point. Jamie Malarkey versus Devonne Smith. Now, this is going to be a good one. Jamie Malarkey made his UFC debut, I'm pretty sure, against Brad Rydell. He got his ass beaten, but he didn't get finished. But if you all go back and watch that fight, man, you wonder where his chin came from. Uh, right. He KO'd Kama Worthy in his last fight, which was very impressive. I did not expect that. And then Devonne Smith, he's he's a prodigy of, shorts, man, of sorts, man. He's 5'9". He's got a 76-inch reach. He hits hard as fuck. I had the pleasure of talking to him and interviewing him one time after his uh, last fight. I think it was after he knocked out Justin James. I was like, bro, you just keep knocking out dudes more experienced than you. And he's like, I know. I got to thank my coaches. But, yeah, he's he's super fun to watch. I'm very yeah. excited for his future. Yeah, there's a lot of hype behind Devontae Smith. And at the same time, for for Jamie, this is a, a good opportunity for him to, to kind of – um take the momentum up from Devonte Smith if he can get the win over him because Devonte people have their eyes on him a little bit so it it's yeah. a kind of a a win win for him considering his last one uh but Devonte Smith I feel like people are looking to him to potentially win this one yeah yeah I think he's got all the tools to do that oh yeah, uh, Vesh Kohea versus Carol Rosa Looks like Kohei is coming back for one last one. I remember like a year ago she was saying her next fight was going to be her last. I'm pretty sure. Right. Um, and then Carol Rose is – whoops. Carol Rose has been doing pretty good lately. Um, let's see, one, two, three. It's 3 0 in the UFC. How do you see this one going? Yeah. Uh, Betch Kohei doesn't seem to want to take easy fights. 
No. Uh, I think I think she's better than her record shows. Uh, mm. she's she's tough, uh, strong, but at the same time, she has a lot of defensive holes in her game. She keeps her chin up in the air. Yeah. She's exciting to watch. I I, I like I, every time she goes out. I like to see her go out there because I feel like she hits hard and she's she's exciting. And she does. She hits hard. Yeah. She she um. She goes out on her shield. Uh, I don't know much about Carol. Uh, I feel like most girls I don't in the bantamweight division are 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 going to be a hard fight for Betch Cohea because she's not very fast. And some of these girls in the bantamweight division. No, she really like isn't. That. She is slow. Yeah. Yeah, she's uh she's more of like a a, a strong fighter than a than an agile fighter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel like she, she's I, a heavy-handed boxer. Yeah, I feel like she needs to make this fight ugly and maybe yeah, sure. potentially hold her against the cage clincher, maybe get a couple takedowns. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, make it kind of ugly. Yeah, I think that's uh that's definitely needed for her to win this fight cuz she need I mean, I'm sure she'd love to go out on a win. She might have even said she was going to retire before the Panny Keens that fight. Yeah, and she lost that fight. Maybe she wants to go out on a win. She has she's fought Good competition, though. She hasn't fought anyone where I'm like, how did she not beat this woman, you know? No, yeah, me either. Yeah, she's always fought really good fighters. Absolutely. Next Ronda we got Rousey. Another... Huh? She fought Ronda back in the day. Yeah, she fought her. That was her first loss. I'm just, I was just trying to think. Like, I'm pretty sure she beat a couple good fighters before that. Well, Shayna Baszler, she wasn't what she used to be, but she was still a very good fighter, much more experienced than her. And she even finished her. That just has faced has faced really good competition in the UFC. She she's underrated considering her record, but yeah, I forgot she finished Shayna Baszler. That's pretty impressive. Man, yeah. right, we got another women's fight coming up: Casey O'Neill and Antonina Shevchenko. Now, a lot of people are picking O'Neill to win this fight because of her grappling, and Antonina's grappling is not anywhere near the level of her sisters. But we have seen her win fights on the ground too. We've just, every time she's lost, we've seen it be because of her grappling. Um, do you think she, you know, fixes that hole in her game in two days? Uh, man, I'm not really sure. I think I think Shevchenko is going to come out very similar to how we've seen her in the past. I don't feel like she's had a ton of growth from fight to fight, which is kind of no, crazy. she hasn't. Considering. It's crazy considering the competition or the, the type of training she probably gets. Mm -hmm. But... Um, uh, man, I mean, I don't know. I'm not, I don't want to get too excited about Shevchenko because in, in it, I fall to this, like other people do. I feel like when people have, someone has a, a like a big hype train behind them, maybe because it's a name or, or uh, they did well versus lower competition. But if someone has a lot of hype coming in and then they underperform, it almost has like a negative reverse effect where like yeah. you don't care about them at all. I almost feel bad for them, like the siblings or the sons of these, you know, like right. Brian Couture, like fucking Jason Guida, you know, Micah Miller, all these other brothers that all the pressure was on them just because of who their sibling was or their dad was. And they're yeah. never as good as their, you know. Well, they also, they, they, it's partially, in my opinion, on the UFC because because they have that name. They try to piggyback off of it and and promo it like yeah, it's, yeah, you know, and Agreed. and then so it so it makes it makes you expect something you're not going to get, and when you don't get it, you're more upset than if they would have just been genuine about it mm -hmm. and sold it to you as it was. I wouldn't have cared as much. I'd be like, oh, she's up and coming prospect. I would have thought, but now in my head, I'm like. Who cares? You know, I don't know. I'm just really annoyed by the the whole situation because I, I she I feel like she's like a 50 50 fight with almost every girl at flyweight. Yeah, but I think that's about accurate to say. Yeah. If they can get her to the ground, they're gonna beat her probably, and also they might be able to beat her on the feet. She's not like super aggressive. Explosive. She's not powerful. She's not the physical specimen that Valentina is. You know, she's no, not they have different genes for sure. Like her. Yeah. It's weird, man. But anyway, headline in the prelims. By the way, I remember what I was going to ask you. I was supposed to advertise a couple things for us. Joe Selecki versus Jared Gordon is headlining the prelims. 
No. Jared Gordon is coming off two wins after getting knocked out by Charles Oliveira. Um, and then Joe Selecki, dude, this this kid's kind of a prodigy of sorts. His grappling is so wicked. Like, he just melted right through Austin Hubbard a couple fights ago, which Austin Hubbard ain't the elite of the elite, but Davey Holmos had his back for half of that fight and couldn't submit him. Right. Um, plus, he beat Matt Wyman mm-hmm. before that, or returning Matt Wyman. Matt isn't anywhere near what he used to be. Neither is Jim Miller, even though Jim Miller is still a good fighter these days. He's coming off a win over him. How do you see this one going? Man, I'm not sure. Uh, Jared Gordon's got more experience, I think. Uh, Joe Selecki yeah, seems like, like the up-and-coming guy. And, and that's, he's another one of those guys, if you look at his record, uh, you're going to see whether he's going to break in uh, – to the to the big dogs or he's gonna stay where he is for a while because 11 and 2 if 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 he keeps winning he's gonna get a little hype behind him they're gonna start uh giving him better competition so i not that jared gordon isn't good competition but uh it's kind of like mid-flight competition like he he seems like he could break into the to the bigger bigger fights with a win over jared gordon yeah yeah gordon yeah he's a good fighter he's a very good fighter he's not you know, elite of the elite, though. As He's well-rounded. Joe Selecki has a serious potential of becoming that. Absolutely. All right. Opening up the main card, Alexander Hernandez is going to fight. A banging like main three. card. Huh? The main card is banging on this dude, one. Yeah, dude, it's so huge. Will you talk about Alexander Hernandez for a second while I look up Mike Breeden? What can you tell me about Alex Hernandez? Yeah, uh, he's a young guy. He's made a lot of changes changes in his career uh, over the last few years after the loss to Donald Cerrone, which, in my opinion, Donald Cerrone back when he fought Alexander Hernandez was in a lot better place, uh, yeah. a lot better shape in his career, and absolutely. Uh, and he was at uh, was that at welterweight or lightweight? Lightweight. Yeah, he was still at lightweight then. Uh, so that was I, his I don't. Return, I don't. Back down to lightweight. Yeah, and in there, that was an experience thing as well. Alexander Hernandez was super mm-hmm. young, and Cowboy literally as is as experienced as any fighter in the UFC will be. Period. Yeah. I think that's exactly what it was. That's all what it was was experience because style matchup as well. Yeah, Chell Sonnen said. Chell said something about that. He was like, "I never understood what it meant." when people would say you need to slow this fight down until you watch that fight. Cause Hernandez was just blitzing Cerrone trying to, you know, wear him out, trying to hurt him. He landed a lot of body shots on him, but Cerrone just slowed the pace down, you know, made sure. His none kickboxing of that. neutralized his. Yeah. It's very forward. neutral. Yes. That's a good way to put it. And then Mike Breeden, Mike Breeden's 10 and three. He is two and one in his last three, lost to a seven and zero, oh, beat a nine and five, beat a 12 and eight. Um, before that, he beat a 12 and five. Before that, he beat a five and two. Which these are all good records. Let's be yeah. honest. You know, there's He's a lot not of picking amateurs. easy fights. Yeah, there's a lot of amateurs with negative records that are really good fighters. But um, yeah, it's not the competition Alex Hernandez has been fighting at all. They so, do have similar similar total experience though. As, yeah, as Alex fighters. Is Alexander cool, Hernandez is right? a very young fighter. He's just progressed really fast. Yes, he has. Yeah, Alex is 12 and 4, and Mike is 10 and 3. Yeah, it's pretty similar. Pretty similar. I feel like they tried to market uh, Alexander Hernandez because they he's, should. he's young, talented, athletic, good looking, and mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure he trains with some other good guys as well. So I feel like they're trying to get him rolling in the division. Well, plus, bro, look at his first two UFC fights. He debuted on short notice with an 8-1 and one record against Benil Dariush and starches him. Um, Dariush, number four ranked right now, he starched him in under a minute. Yeah. And then Olivier Albin Mercier, he's not in the UFC anymore. I'm a little upset about that. But he's one of the best, like, overall grapplers at lightweight, and Hernandez wrestled fucked him the entire time. It was a tough fight. He did end up on his back at times, but yeah. he – that was such a great fight. That was a real scramble fest that was. So to beat two guys like that in your first two fights, that's that's pretty impressive. And Olivier was a very established UFC talent at that point. Yeah, Hernandez is is definitely uh, the fighting beyond his his experience level. Mm-hmm. And 
I feel like in a way he's comparable to Kevin Lee, not not in his cardio yeah. or not that he fades, but he he's in the way that he's his own, own worst enemy and also how he matches up stylistically with another fighter yeah, will determine dude. if he wins or not, not necessarily who's the better overall fighter. Like Kevin Lee is a better fighter than a lot of guys, but the way that he matches up with them is bad for him. Right. That's so true, man. That's that's such a good point. Alexander really Hernandez will, will blast through a really high level guy. Um, that's <laughs> a good matchup for him, and then he might struggle with someone else who might not as be high level, but is a bad matchup for him. He mm-hmm. matchups matter for him a lot. I feel like because he's so early in his career and it's an experience thing. Probably he hasn't seen too many looks yet. You know. Yeah. Yeah. This next now one, that's changing. No, he's yeah, not he's faced more guys now. But when he first came in and he was kind of 50, 50 50 for a little bit, so he's been finished twice. Yeah, he got finished toward the end of the second round by Cerrone and Drew Dober. And then I thought he was going to beat Tiago Moises in his last fight. I was a little upset about that. Moises all is a super bit tough better guys. than I thought he was, though, huh? All super tough guys, yeah, dude, all super tough guys. And then, yeah, his wins, fuck, let's go back to his wins, beat tough guys. Uh, yeah, Mercier, Darius, Trinaldo, which that fight should have been a no contest with how little action there was. And Grusmacher, who beat Joe Lozon. Darius, man, he's a he's a hard matchup for everyone with the way that he fights. Really he's a tough is. fight for everybody. And beating him like that is Honestly, a huge deal. I could see Hernandez doing that again, too, just by the matchup. Yeah, but like I said, man, matchups are everything for Hernandez. Yep. They really are. This next one is super exciting. I'm so glad they rescheduled this fight. I don't remember when it was first supposed to go oh, down, yeah. but I do remember seeing these two. Aspen Ladd and Macy, Macy Chasson. This is going to be a really, really They like good to throw fight. down. I'm a big fan of Macy because I really liked that year of that Ultimate Fighter season. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, uh, me too. A lot of the fighters on that season were really interactive and in, with the fans. So, like, yeah. you kind of develop like a like a a fanship with them because they're so interactive with you. And every time you mention them, they respond and you know what I mean? Yeah. They're, like all the, they're really active on Twitter. So it's like, you kind of start to root for them after down the road. You're like, Oh, I remember, you know? So mm-hmm. I, I, I always root for Macy when she fights, but at the same time, she's actually a really dangerous fighter on the she field. And she's, and she's, when she's, she's so inexperienced, but she's coming into her own. She's gets more athletic. Every time she goes out there, she looks better. Yes. I agree. She's seven and one. Uh, Aspen is nine and one. Aspen has really looked perfect throughout yeah. her career, aside from eating that right cross, or maybe it was a left cross. I don't remember. It was a it was a two. She ate from Jermaine Duranami, a forty six and zero kickboxer. So really, there's no shame in that. It's the only time she has ever looked not invincible. She's good everywhere, man. She's got really good wrestling. She's got good hands. She's got good kicks to go along with it. They match up really good. This is going to be a really exciting fight. I can almost guarantee it. Uh, Aspen Ladd, she's got the short reach. She's a short, stocky fighter. She likes to get on the inside. Macy, she welcomes that in a way because she's got really good Muay Thai. She's got good elbows. She's got good knees. She's got good good inside and outside striking. And her BJJ is pretty good. Yeah, it is. She's got a six-inch reach advantage on Aspen. And her pace is also very good. Like, she's got a fucking almost Colby Covington or Maraud like pace. Not quite, but, dude, she pushes it every time she's in there. Absolutely. This is kind of like a – I know that the, the skill levels are, are a little bit different, but in, in like, a, a stylistic and physical standpoint, this is like a, like a – Israel Adesanya versus like Yo Romero. It's like the strong, powerful wrestler chick yep. versus the tall, long striker That's uh, with saw good it. elbows and knees. I was just gonna say, in order for Aspen to win this fight, she's gonna have to use her wrestling. I think this might be. I I think I'm gonna take Aspen to win this fight. I think this is gonna be only oh, the Lord. second person she can't finish. She has two decisions on her record. Both come over Ciara Eubanks. I think Macy will be her third. If Aspen wins this, I feel like she'll she'll have to like hang with macy on the feet but she'll have to get her against the cage somehow and get her down and i feel like she'll do a lot of work in the even in the guard from ground and pound i just see her being active on the ground yeah so 
that could win her a decision. Uh, Macy is hard to hold down, and she's very strong for her weight. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. That, that I don't even know if I would bet money on that fight. That's just one that I, uh, a Me women's either. fight that I'm I'm excited for. If I did, I would bet on Aspen, but I don't know if I would. I don't know. What are the betting lines on that? Do you know? Here, let's see. Um, The next fight is Misha Sirkinov versus Kristoff Jocko. What can you tell me about them? I'll look it up. Well, Jocko's had up, ups and downs. Uh, he's exciting to watch always. Yes, um, he is. It was kind of like Sean Strickland with more kicks. Yeah, kind of. I mean, he's a little he's a little more tight than mm. Strickland. Uh, and he tries to play a little more of a technical game. But uh, you're right. He likes to stand and bang and stay in your face. He throws kicks. Um, I don't know if this is a good matchup for him. Because I feel like Misha's going to grab him and pull him down. Yeah. And also, mm-hmm. Jocko has – I'm pretty sure he's had a few pretty bad knockouts. I think he's been knocked out once. Let's see. At least once really bad. Oh, fuck. I'm not. All right. By the way, uh, those lines are – Macy is at plus 220. Aspen is at minus 280. So, honestly, I don't even really think that's worth betting on. No. Unless you're going to bet on Macy. Yeah. All right. Jotko has been knocked out twice. Oh, yeah. Uriah Hall knocked him out. Who else knocked him out? Brad Tavares. Holy fuck, really? Brad Tavares finished him. Dude, he don't finish anybody ever. Yeah. He does yeah. hit hard, though. I think it's just – uh. Oh, yeah, that's the third round one. His I slickness with his boxing is is a little more predictable than some of the yeah. other guys. But he does hit hard. He has the ability. He does. He's a big – Thick dude, strong, like, explosive guy. I'm yeah. so sorry. And he's his striking is very good. Like it's not the best, obviously, but it's very good. I can't believe he don't have more finishes. But yeah, I remember that. No, he he's also fought the tough, off. tough guys. Yeah. So Jocko was 19 and one. He lost a split decision to former World Series of Fighting champ champ David Branch. Then he got knocked out by Uriah Hall after beating the fuck out of him early on. Yeah. He got knocked out by Brad Tavares. So he went from 19 and one to 19 and four. Then he won three straight and lost to Sean Strickland in his last fight. Misha Sirkinov is coming down from 205, which is super interesting because he's Oh, always, I didn't notice that. Yeah, he's always been a little bolder. Like, I don't know how he's going to do that. I really hope be he does ripped. well for him. Yeah, dude, he's always been ripped. He's going to be real fucking ripped this time. He's 6'3 with a 77-inch reach, too. And he's a wicked, wicked grappler, Misha Sirkinov is. And he's got power in his hands, I'm pretty sure, Yes, too. he does. I think Jocko has to finish uh, Misha to win this. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, I think he's going to go down to the ground quite a few times, I think. Misha is two and four in his last six. All four losses are by Nako. Oof. Do you know who those guys were that beat him? Yeah, Vulcan Ozdemir, Glover Tushera, Johnny Walker, and Ryan Spann. Best best guys almost in the division right now. Uh, Ryan Spann, not quite, but... uh, He's still up there. He's yeah, got him. He has wins over Ian Kudelaba, Nikita Krylov, both submissions, Patrick Cummins, which isn't the most impressive, also a submission, and Jimmy Crute, also a submission. Hmm. This is an interesting one. He submitted Jimmy Crute, bro. That's insane. Jimmy yeah. Crute just submitted Paul Craig in the fight prior to this. That's that was an remarkable. experience thing, too, probably. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, Crute had never seen anything Crute, like Crute that. will beat him down the road. You know, oh, I think so. Nine times sure. I think he would beat him now, honestly. Yeah. Absolutely. He just needs to know to not leave his fucking head normal up there <clears throat> yep. against that guy. All right, the feature fight, a welterweight ball between Alex Oliveira and Nico Price. Now, I heard Luke Thomas and Brian Campbell. I think it was uh, Josh Thompson and John McCarthy. It was one of those two. And they were saying neither of these guys are going to make their way up to a title shop. But whenever either of these guys are fighting, you know that fight's going to be a fucking banger. And now they're fighting each other. So Nico Price is like a legend where he's from in the local fight scene down in Florida because of his fighting style. And he has become world Yeah, known he's got some really Florida. unorthodox knockouts now. He's got oh, dude, he two really does. or three really weird knockouts. Well, dude, he's the only fighter to ever get two knockouts off their back. He's yeah. the only fighter to ever hammer fist someone into a knockout off their back. And then he had, what, one of three to get an up kick? One of two to get an up kick? 
yeah, it's fucking yeah. remarkable. Unbelievable. How opportunistic with like I've seen guys be opportunistic with submissions, like Uriah Faber, like Joe Lozon, like Charles Oliveira. But to be opportunistic with knockouts like that, that's something completely new. Like, and yeah, it's not a very technical guy either. Where people aren't even looking to defend themselves as much. Yeah, on the top. it's crazy. He's not even very technical, and it works, man. But he is coming off a defeat to somebody. Fuck, who was yeah, it? He Michelle Perheya, I think. Yeah, he lost yeah. to Michelle Perheya. And um, Oliver is coming off two losses. Now, if it goes to the ground, unless Nico's on his back and gets a knockout, I would see Oliveira having a grappling advantage. And on the feet, I think he's a little more technical than Nico, too. But I really hope Nico wins this fight. How do you see it going? This is a guaranteed firefight. Uh, Both of these guys are going to lay it on the line for sure. What's on the line? Both of these guys are going to lay it all on the line for sure. sure. They have a similar build. Uh, They both like to to fight long, use kicks. They both got funky BJJ and exciting grappling. They're active. They don't just lay and hang out. Yeah. Uh, they got good reversals, good scrambles. This is has all the makings to make an exciting fight. Uh, I think Nico has more um, finishing ability for this fight. Alvarez is starting to get a little bit old. He's actually very old. Uh, yeah. But... Uh, I don't know. Either guy could win this. Uh, if I had to pick, I'd pick Price. Yeah. Depends on how, how touched up Price gets early. That's a very good point. Yeah. We'll know in the first round, probably. We'll see how he's going to come out with it. Yeah, it'll be super int- I know Nico isn't going to get tired. Alex might. I don't know. That's going to be that's going to be really interesting. I hope Nico wins. I really do. Right. Co-main event. I almost thought these two fought already, but they haven't. Kevin Holland is fighting Kyle Dawkins, Chris Dawkins' his little brother. Um, <laughs> oh, by the way, Chris Dawkins, who just knocked out Shabino Durakimov last weekend, he's fighting Derek Lewis next. Um, yeah, I know. I saw that. I think I sent that to you. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted everybody else to know it, too, if they haven't seen it. Yeah, that's a that's crazy, crazy matchup. Fucking awesome, man. I mean, they're really throwing him right into the D. I don't even think Shamil was ranked, bro. And then Derek Lewis is like a top three, top four guy. Like, that's remar- that's crazy. I don't know if that's a good idea. Derek Lewis will fight anyone who doesn't care about ranking. He just wants to go out yeah. there and prove to himself that he he's good enough to be the champ. Yeah, especially after getting his ass beat in his hometown like that. I'm sure he'd be happy to fight literally anybody next. Yeah. <clears throat> How do you see Dawkins and Holland going? No, Kyle Dawkins is not as much of a boxer as his brother. He's more of a grappler. Kevin Holland is a good grappler too, but he's more of a striker. I think Kevin can win this fight on the feet, or I think he can get all wrestled to a decision, honestly, like he did in his last two. Even though Dawkins is one and two in the UFC, he's a very skilled fighter, and he can wrestle quite well. I feel like the stronger man is going to win this because... I don't think that's going to be Kevin. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, he has like a, a, a long strength, but... I don't know how he matches up physically next to Kyle Dawkins. Uh, when I see them next to each other, I'll probably have a little bit better of an idea. But if Kyle Dawkins is strong enough to uh, just grab his legs and, and run the pipe or, or to, you know, get some trips or, or to get the takedown, he should win the fight. Yeah, they're both 6'3". Holland has an 81-inch reach. Dawkins has a 76-inch reach. Hmm, so that they should both be a good matchup. Well Kevin Holland uh, usually doesn't fight people that are as tall as him. Yeah, I know. That's kind of – that's something, right? It's going to be weird for him. Fuck, I don't know if he ever has. Let's see. It's going to be Brunson. weird because he likes to do that long-rangey stuff that it's yeah. not work as well. Let's see. Vittori, no. Brunson, no. Jacare, no. Onaveros, no. Stewart, no. Joaquin Buckley, no. Anthony Hernandez, no. Brennan Allen. Brennan Allen might be his size. He's six two. Uh, Alessio De Chirico, no. Jared Mearshart is his size. John Phillips, no. Like it's crazy. Yeah, he doesn't. Going he into the main that. event between Tiago Santos and Johnny Walker. Holy shit, what a fight this is! No, Walker is what four and two in the UFC, right? With four first round knockouts. Um, Tiago Santos has lost his last three straight, which 
It's come as a bit of a surprise. Some people think he only lost two straight because everybody thinks he beat John Jones. But let's talk about this for a second. John Jones' last two fights, a lot of people thought both were losses. Both guys have lost twice since – both getting finished both times since yeah. he beat him. And people still think he's the number one fighter in the world. I just want to get that out there. But how do you think this one goes, man? This is a really, really, really dangerous fight for both guys. Yeah. Uh, both these guys have the ability to knock each other out right off the bat. We could say that. <clears throat> uh, also, uh, I feel like this is a matchup of two different kickboxing styles. One is yes. kind of an untamed, you know, unorthodox, uh, Jerry Porashka style, mm -hmm. rushing weird angles and weird trajections of punches. Uh, and Tiago yeah. Santos is kind of, uh, he does, um, I wouldn't, I, it's weird saying about Tiago Santos that he's the more, the more technical version because to, compared to other people he's a he's a bruiser you know yep. but in this one he's he's the more calculated um puncher <clears throat> i think mm -hmm, uh, more calculated sure. kicker he does more traditional orthodox uh strikes but i think he's more experienced and he doesn't leave his chin out there quite as much um age is probably a slight factor also i think tiago santos it's not beyond him to to try to secure a takedown on walker in this no, I think that would be really smart of him to do. You know, he is a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, even though we've literally never seen it before. I think the only time we've ever seen him grapple was against Kevin Holland. Mm -hmm. Um, But, yeah, Johnny Walker, he really does. He has that Jerry Prohoshka style. He's 6'6 with an 82-inch reach. Tiago Santos, I'm pretty sure he's 6'4. Actually, he's not. He's 6'2. Oh. Well, the 76-inch reach. They're both big dudes. Um, yeah. Yeah, as we said, they both starch each other. It's going to be super interesting, man, because, yeah, Tiago Santos is not a technical striker, but I would definitely say he's more technical than Walker. But who knows? Maybe Walker has really been playing the he's work the more with orthodox striker. What's up? He's the more orthodox striker. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you go back and watch his Jimmy Manoa fight or, you know, it's hard to see, but. He has had a couple fights since then where he actually looked very good and, you know, solid on the feet. Johnny Walker never really has, honestly. He's always looked – I wouldn't say always. He usually he looks risks. good. He takes chances and they work. You know what I mean? Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Didn't work against Corey Anderson or no. Nikita Krylov. But, yeah, this is going to be a super interesting one. Who do you think wins it? I think it's literally a pick. I think fight. something to think about is who was Tiago Santos's last fight? I think it was Glover Teixeira. He almost knocked him out like 30 times, but ended up getting submitted. And when? Oh, was no, that? actually, it was Alexander Ratchik. He lost to Ratchik last. When was that fight? That was a pretty boring fight. Um, 259 back in March. Yeah. Um, I think we're seeing the slowdown <laughs> of Santos a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Uh, he doesn't, he looks like he. He's a, a little chunkier. He fights a little chunkier now than he used to. And at, with the age and all the damage he's taken over the years and after the John Jones fight with the surgeries, I think it's safe to say we're going to start to eventually see him either get caught more or him to have a lot less success. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this might be where you see – maybe considerations that Santos should potentially retire. Yeah. I feel like if he gets knocked out really bad here uh, and he gets another fight and that doesn't do that well in his next fight, it might be the end uh, for yeah. Santos. And at least well. from a smart standpoint, like in my opinion, I feel like it would be smart for him too. He's not looking like the same fighter anymore, and that's mm -hmm. just the fact of the matter. That's what I thought, too, especially in his last fight. I thought his last fight with Tushara, but no, his last fight with Rache, he didn't do next to nothing, man. Yeah, like, and Walker looks like he's still potentially going, going to be getting better. So, I think so. He moved to TriStar before his last fight, so I think we're going to have to see at least a couple few fights before we really see <clears throat> what that camp does for him. One guy's moving up and one guy's moving down, so... <clears throat> I feel like the odds are slightly in Johnny Walker's favor. He's also fighting against a smaller guy. Yeah. Yeah, he is. He's four inches shorter, which is and he's too. And he's ex and he's really strong. Uh, Walker is a really, really strong guy. Mm -hmm. Santos, I think, needs to get the takedown, but I don't know if he will because 
Uh, Walker isn't like the tall, lanky, typical tall, lanky guy. He's really tall and strong. He's got big, strong legs. He's lean. He doesn't carry much extra weight. Mm-hmm. You know, he's he's almost completely lean. And he's dangerous uh, with everything. His punches, elbows, short, kicks, short knees. range. He's really dangerous. Oh, yeah, so short he, range. Yeah, that's not something you see from a lot of lanky guys. He yeah. can knock you out from three inches away. Yeah, you're Absolutely. right. Absolutely. With little elbows, you can get hurt from, from inches. It's mm-hmm. it's crazy. He he's he's a special athlete, uh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, he definitely is. Um, I think I'd like to take Walker in this fight, but we'll see how it goes. Do you have a hitman shirt by you? <clears throat> yes, sir. This is the the beginning design. My other one's slightly different, but okay, cool. So for those of y'all who don't know, Tyler and I will be fighting one another in two days at Street Beefs on October second. So you can check that out and to show some love to him, buy one of his Hitman shirts. Uh, you want to give your plug so everybody can get a hold of you for one. Uh, yeah, you guys can look me up on Instagram at uh, New York underscore Hitman. It's NY underscore Hitman. And uh, there'll be a link there. You can DM me. I take Cash App, um, Facebook Pay, all that. We can work something out and I can ship it right to you. You haven't shipped them to you when you uh, get them in the mail. Absolutely. You got hats and other stuff too, right? Yeah, I'm going to be doing caps, beanies jackets hoodies basically everything i can think of um and i'll try to keep the the price as low the quality as high as i can you know it'd be a good product oh yeah it's a really great idea to market yourself i love how you're doing that all right buddy well i think that about wraps it up i will talk to you soon thank you very much man thank you like and subscribe guys have a good one